So about a year ago, uh, I wanted to do this thing. It was back in November. I don't, I'm not really sure what I was thinking, but I decided to put salt in water and put, <laughs> and put electricity through it. I don't know what my idea was, but uh, yeah, I did that again today. So initially, I was going to use a 9 volt battery like I'd done previously, but it was dead because I'd been sitting for like a year now doing nothing. Uh, I mean, if it was doing stuff, it would have probably died sooner, but still. Additionally, to prevent the formation of a green substance in the liquid, I was going to use graphite as an electrode, but uh, no, that does not work at all. <laughs> graphite does not conduct electricity yet. I don't know why I thought it would conduct electricity, but it does not seem to like to do that. So I just assumed it was the electrodes that were the problem, and then I just kept using the 9 volt battery, which didn't work. I mean, the, the graphite, I'm pretty sure it conducts electricity. I just think it was the battery that was the problem, honestly. So I switched out my electrodes for an iChrome wire and some stainless steel nail of some kind. Which this is not ideal because technically the nail could oxidize, but it seemed to be stainless steel because it did not do that at all. Nor did the alligator clips, because I found out the nichrome wire was not working. Or I just realized, and then I realized it was the battery because <laughs> what the heck, how does that not work? So I finally got it to work. And I didn't notice it. And also, you all didn't see me put the salt in there. Which is why we had the weird intro, but uh, it was fine. But yeah, when you put salt in water, you gotta shake it up and it turns white for a few seconds, and then it'll go back to looking like normal water. Except if you hold it up to a light, it looks really glassy for some reason. But now, what we're gonna do is use two A batteries. I don't know what they're called. They always use A's in these batteries, and I don't know how many A's these ones have, but they're the thick A batteries. So I use two of those to get enough electricity, because I need quite a few volts. I, I don't need more than... I don't need 9 volts, obviously. It'd be faster with 9 volts, but I could do it with less. But I couldn't see it was working, because the camera was in the way. And then when I finally looked, it's saw it was working. That was amazing. Okay. Alright, so in this reaction, there's bubbles forming around the electrodes. At the anode, I believe that's where the hydrogen is going. At the cathode, that's where the chlorine is going. Where is the hydrogen coming from? It's coming from it's coming from the water itself. We're breaking the water apart here. And the chlorine is coming from the table salt. Now this this reaction is called electrolysis, and basically what that means is that the actual metals we're separating a metal from a non-metal, basically, using electricity. Now, water itself, I don't think it can be electrolyzed, I'm not too certain, I, I've tried that before and it didn't seem to work, but when you put salt in it, the salt acts as an electrolyte, allowing it to conduct electricity pretty well. Now, you notice, we haven't discussed any of the solid or liquids in this reaction, we've only discussed the gases, because those are what you can see right now, but in a few seconds, we'll have, so the water will start to turn yellow. I'm not sure what impurity caused it to turn yellow. I, I, I don't know. Also, I do add sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. And it acts as a catalyst to allow this to occur faster. So some of the sodium won't react because I, I didn't do perfect measurements. I don't even have measuring tools. What are you, are you kidding me? Additionally, th there could be other impurities inside the water, but this, this water seems to be distilled water because I, I got it from a bottle. Lastly, the actual sodium and oxygen, th there, there's also a hydrogen left in there bonded with the oxygen. They end up bonding together and creating sodium hydroxide, which ends up in this water. So we have three things in there. We got sodium chloride, sodium hydroxide, and sodium bicarbonate, all in this solution. Of course, the sodium bicarbonate just fell down to the bottom and is acting as a catalyst, so it's, it's not really essential to the reaction. In fact, it's not even necessary. It just makes it go faster, in my opinion. And I've read it makes it go faster, so that's why I decided to use it, to test that. So I guess now it's time to talk about what comes next. So basically, we're left with this solution. This wonderful substance. 
Now, the sodium bicarbonate does not seem to be soluble in this solution, because this solution is just about as basic as the sodium bicarbonate, although some of it may have actually dissolved into the water before we even started doing the electrolysis, which basically creates an impurity, so I, I honestly don't think there's an advantage to using sodium bicarbonate as a catalyst at all. However, it did make it go faster, so I, I maybe. But wh why wouldn't you just use a solid catalyst? Like, why just use a solid one, not a powder? But th but this solution basically contains sodium impurities. Uh, so well, salt impurities. We we got salt in there, sodium chloride. But we also got sodium hydroxide in there, which is the most part of it. So we don't know. I don't know how much it is. I didn't do any math at all. I don't care about math. Math can go in the trash can for all I care. Well, uh, unless I actually get measuring devices that, that work properly. I, I just use these... I, I don't even have measuring devices, honestly. I just use my eyeballs. But uh, next step would be to actually distill... Probably filter some of the sodium bicarbonate. First you filter out... First you filter out sodium bicarbonate, okay? Second, you need to... So find a way to remove the salt, which could be... Actually, the salt thing might work. Now, this is something they use in oil refining, where they take the salt out of oil by putting water into the oil, which takes the salt because salt wants to go to water. And water can't be absorbed by oil, so it will just float out of the mixture, right? Now, if you were to put a substance in there, that would draw out the salt and would not mix in with the rest of the solution, you'd be left with pure sodium hydroxide solution in, in water. To get the sodium hydroxide out of the water, what you'd do is you would boil this wonderful substance. Or you can let it evaporate, which is what I'm gonna do. It's gonna take a while, though, and I'll inform you what happens next once we finish evaporating it. 